you know, there's something different about towns of rivers flowing through them. You know, for a lot of places in China, their soul is in the environment. Sometimes it's the mountains, but more often it's the water. But what about here in Yudal? Let's go find out. It took me around three hours to fly here from Beijing. And at first glance, Yudal looks just like any other town in Southeast Asia. So I'm heading up into the mountains to see the lay of the land and hopefully find out what makes this place tick. My first stop, Mount Pingshan, a mecca for those locals who like to work for a good view. <笑>你明明呢<笑> Well, it really is beautiful, hey? So this is the uh, famous Qingshan. Hell of a view, but my God, I have to work so hard for it. Thankfully, I've still got enough energy to make it to Golden Lotus Temple. It's devoted to Zen Buddhism, which focuses more on meditation and is perfectly in tune with the peace and quiet you get at the top of this mountain. Uh, uh, 把这个寺院就迁建到这里 Meditation's all well and good, but I can't exactly sleep at the temple, so I'm checking in to the Pingshan Ranch Resort, set amongst acres of virgin forest. The place offers cabins with all the mod cons, which puts you in the difficult position of having to choose between meditating and watching the telly. Got my little mountain cabin, the birds and the cicadas, the chirping. And the air is so fresh up here. It's possibly one of the most relaxing places you can be. Walk around the resort and you'll find that the essence of Yudal is not just in its mountains, but also in its water sources. They nurture this lush environment and in turn, the dairy cows that graze on Pingshan's plateaus. Oh. <laughs> Whoops, kind of forgot we're in the subtropics here. Actually, I think this, if I'm not mistaken, is rattan. And so is everything else here. It was a bit surprising since I always thought they grew in Southeast Asia, but the more you know. Wow. Oh. Oh. oh, that's so good. The water here is so cool and refreshing. And it's so clear as well. You can tell it's absolutely clean. I mean, no wonder they built the, uh, the dairy ranch up on this mountain. It's got such an incredibly lush environment.
Hello, buddy. Have some of this. Yes, fresh grass, fresh grass. There you go. You can have it later. <laughs> well, I've got to say, it's the first time for me coming to a dairy farm. And these cows get milked about twice a day. So we actually had to come here quite early in the morning to see the entire milking process. <笑>哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈
Out in the countryside, it seems that some people still haven't moved on.你们这个在做什么呀就是草鞋草鞋啊哦就用这个把这变成鞋是吗草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草草
Oh, so this is where it all began all those many decades ago. It was from here that the Red Army set off on their long march of some 12,500 kilometers with 86,000 troops. But in order to set off on their journey, first they had to cross this obstacle, this river, and the locals back then went and took down their own doors so that they could build a floating bridge, a pontoon, so that the Red Army could set off. Coming up next, I meet the hacker people who live throughout southern China and Southeast Asia and try to find out what it is that defines them. Now this feels more like southern China. I've arrived at Shangbao village, home to a large community of hacker people and the ancestral halls of the Zhong clan. Wow, must have been pretty wealthy to afford all these hitching posts. You know, 95% of Yudul's population consists of hacker people, but they weren't originally from here. They actually migrated here several centuries ago from the central plains further up north. But these days, it's quite hard to distinguish the difference between hacker people and Han Chinese. They wear the same clothes, they speak the same language, they even look the same. I reckon the best way to understand hacker people is to come visit their ancestral temple because here these rows upon rows of plaques bearing their ancestors' names get respected and worshipped because although the hacker people have made this place their home, they'll never forget where they came from and who their ancestors were. I want to learn what sets hacker people apart, so I've arranged to meet the very knowledgeable Miss Liu. Wow, this is a very long history of the Chinese culture. Yes, this culture has been around for 800 years. Then we have this culture that is composed of 18 cultures. It's a culture group. It's a culture group, which is also more common. The culture group is the most complete one, which is 13 cultures. 他当时为什么建了那么多祠堂啊？对啊，因为我们这里宗氏家族当时是人丁比较兴旺的，所以在当地呢就成片的建了很多的祠堂，形成了一个群。对。啊，这也算保护的不错的一个祠堂吧？对。哎，这个应该有活动吗？他们为什么穿的那么亮？因为一个镇的村民在祠堂里准备跳征兆舞。哦，征兆舞。这个兄弟们，他们民间舞蹈，这个兄弟们，他们民间舞蹈，就是用征兆来跳的。哦，各级干。啊，哎，民间舞蹈。中山歌，中山歌，要自马，双双队出啊，当初的马子断的恩啊
I'm told this dance is often performed for major events like weddings. Held in the ancestral hall, it's supposed to bring good luck to the family. The name Hakka means guest, a reminder of a time when they were forced to migrate south to escape wars, famine, and chaos. It's because of this displacement that Hakka people hold so much respect for their ancestors and are such sticklers for tradition, bringing old customs to their new homes. What are you doing? This is a Oh, 这个这个这个跟跟随是有这个跑去是在旅馆。Oh <笑> 我还是看您做吧 The sauna is often played at weddings, just like this one. Obviously, I didn't make the band, so I've decided to crash the party. And my god, is this an elaborate affair! An entire procession of gift bearers have to walk all the way to the bride's house to pick her up, which can sometimes take days if she lives far away. <laughs> really is a momentous day today. Once in a lifetime opportunity actually. We're experiencing a proper hacker wedding with all the sauna, with all the instruments and the entire village coming out in procession. It's gonna be massive. We're at the bride's house, but her family won't give her away without a fight. And we all know the best way to a lady's heart. Your hard-earned cash. Of course, this is all fun and games. And once the dowry's been brought in, the bride can finally come out. There's a lot of symbolism going on here, and after paying respects to her ancestors, the bride has to be carried over a bucket containing a seven-wick candle, which represents good luck.
Then it's into the litter she goes, to be carried off to the groom's ancestral hall, while the rest of us have to walk. Totally not bitter. Once there, the bride is carried over the threshold by her soon-to-be hubby, which is actually quite like how things are done in the West. And now, it's time for the groom's family to put her through her paces. Uh, remember to be a good wife if you don't want to be sitting in the basket for the whole day. Instead of cake, red paint is smeared over people's faces to spread good fortune and joy. There's also a more sobering offering of something red. Finally, the bride is accepted into the family. The newlyweds are then immediately urged to get to work by being toasted with these bowls of wine with great big eggs inside them. Hint, hint, wink, wink. All that's left is to tell the ancestors about the new addition to the family. But the dead can't see or hear, so you have to get in touch through a different method. Fire. To the Chinese, it's like FedEx. You use it to send stuff to the dead. And here it is, the final moment. And the veil is off. Oh, she's beautiful and the groom is well and truly chuffed. What a spectacular wedding. And of course, no wedding is complete without a big feast for a lot of hungry, happy people. Makes me kind of want to uh, get married myself. Time to get some food.